Welcome back again. This is Military Guna TV. Um, another embarrassing performance and another defeat. I will be definitely going through the player ratings at this point in time and also a bit of stuff that David Orenstein had said and in accordance with Mikel Arteta. Um, so let me get into the player ratings first, then I'll go to what David Orenstein said about Mikel Arteta. And is nowhere near the possibility of being sacked. But let me get into the pair ratings. All right, so an overall poor performance from the team yesterday. And I've seen a trend where teams are coming out early and scoring an early goal on us, then sit back and uh, sit back and just let us control the game basically because they know that we aren't the team, we're not scoring at the moment. We're, we, we lack creativity, we lack goal scorers. So. They are giving us the opportunity to do what we want, basically. Um, so, take that out of the way. Um, moving to the other side of things. Mm, I've seen, we, we played against Burnley, dominated Burnley. Unfortunate luck, and we're out of the game. Played against Everton, dominated the entire second half. Nothing came from it, we didn't get anything. Played against Tottenham at first, dominated the entire second half again. We, basically, 90% of the game we dominated. We got nothing from it. We did not dominate the Southampton game. We we were in the game, but we did not dominate the game. When we went down ten man, it basically become harsh and harder. We play against Leicester. We're dominating Leicester. One goal still killed us. Play against Wolves. Dominate Wolves. One goal still killed us. So what I'm saying, sir, is that the underlying metrics are in our favor, but the outcome, the results are not in our favor. I normally say that under metrics normally catch catches up, so let's see how that goes. Alright, so player ratings. Um <sighs> this is hard. Um Berlin in goal, I'll give him a five standard performance from Berlin. Um I cannot see myself giving him anything more than just a standard five because he was an average performance from the team, and I do believe that he could have done a little bit better with the with the second goal. He, he moved from the front post, but generally most keeper would move from the front post because in attendance we thought it different. They would pick up the the attacker, trying to get the ball, hit the ball on the front front post. So most keepers would move from the front post to get themselves in position to collect the ball in the middle of the pitch or to come and get a punch out of a from from the ball itself. But I give him, I give Burnley a five. Um, right back, Ainsley, Maitland, Niles, or right wing back, I should say. He played a good game. This, it was evident that Ainsley, Maitland, Niles is a better right back slash full back than um, Hector Bellerin. And we saw that, we, de we definitely saw that in the game in itself. We saw that. So um, I give in the Midland Niles a six. I don't think I can get any, go any further than that. He had a very tough battle with Richardson, physical, pace, quick. So uh, at one point in time, I saw him run. He, he turned, he, he, he turned his back onto the ball and run towards Richardson. And as soon as Richardson received the ball, uh, he was handing and he, he, he took the ball from him. And most people would say that would be poor defending because he did not see where the ball was coming from. But at that point in time, he knew for a fact that the man himself was actually a more threat than the ball with arm than the ball itself. So he get to the man as early as possible, and as soon as he receives it, put in a tackle and try to beat him. Because he didn't want a, a case in which he tried he go for the ball, miss the ball, and then now he'd be straight, the arm which also be straight through. So he said, Let me go towards the man first. Allow him to receive the ball, then I can engage him. Rather than trying to engage the ball with that 50 50 chance of engaging the ball. Because at the point in time when he was started when he started to run and the ball wasn't even played as yet. So I'll give um Maitland as a five, no a six, sorry. Um we have three centre backs, um Rob Holding, captain, own goal, three, poor performance from Rob Holding. Again, another poor performance from Rob Holding. Only thing is that Rob Holding is actually good in the hair and we still consider the goal from set piece. But I give Rob Holding a three because of the own goal. He should be aware of his surrounding and he shouldn't even allow he shouldn't he shouldn't have allowed um Calvert Lewin to get around him to get that header off 
or even it should, it should, it should have been more on the goal side of Calvert Lewin. But I give him a three. David Lewis, yeah, basically an average game for David Lewis. You, you, do, you, you, you didn't even see that he was actually on the pitch. Um, he plays a few long ball over the line, yeah. A basic game for David Lewis. Nothing extra, nothing added. So basically, I give David Lewis a five. Karen Tierney, um, a six. Another hard fought game for him. Trying his best, doing his best. Um, he put in a performance like always. Standard seven out of ten players every week. That is Karen But for this purpose, I give him a six. Um, left wing back, Bakaya Saka, one of the man who's trying his best. And I think that this is time now that we have to pull him out of the team for him to get some rest. He has to get some rest because each time I see Saka go down, my my heart goes, my heart rate goes, uh, heart rate goes up. So each time he goes down, my heart rate goes up. So I think it's time now for him to get some rest and not let fatigue or injury um, get the better of him. Um, so I give Bakaya Saka a six as well. I think six is the highest score anyone on the pitch can definitely get. Mohamed El Nini and Daniel Sabayos. El Nini, I give him a five, a standard five. Daniel Sabayos, I give him a four, maybe a three. An ex extremely poor performance. Miss passes all over the place. Keep consistently getting dragged out of position. Uh, poor performance from Daniel Sabayos. I give Daniel Sabayos a three. Mohamed El Nini, five. He fought, was there, and standard performance as well. Um, from three, Nicolas Pepe. Poor performance from Pepe. I give Pepe a five. Uh, even though he scored a penalty and the penalty is the reason why he got a 5 Eddie and Ketia another poor performance he, he, he brought a he fight he brought himself about on the pitch he got a good opportunity in which he missed it he took it one time and I think he should have taken at least an extra touch so he can get a better finesse on the ball but I give Eddie and Ketia a 3 William, a problematic character on the pitch, I would say, in relation to the Arsenal fans. I give William a three as well. He wasn't as good as Pepe. He really came, he came alive in the second half, though, when he, he we moved to the attacking, the central attacking midfield position. He, he was playing some ball through the lines and stuff, but that should have been the basic for any player playing in that position, and he didn't really too much at that and at one point in time where he had the ball and he should have simply side the ball to Carantini for Carantini to to, to, um, to to give what give, um, give the attackers a good cross on the ball but he didn't do it he, he up to do that and did something else and the attack breakdown so so I give William a three um so let me run through again Berlin of five standard five Enzi Metna nine six Ragolin three David Lewis, standard five, Karen Tierney, six, um, El Nini, five, Sabaya, three, Saka, six, Nicolas Pepe, five, Eddie Nketiah, three, William, three. Poor performance all around, even though we dominated the second half. When the likes of Joe Willock came on, he was really pressing and pushing hard to get something done. And there's a reason why you see um, the, the, the impact that Joe Willock made. And on a normal basis, Mikel Arteta would pull Dan Sabas and bring on Joe Willock. But for this purpose, he pulled El Nini and bring on Joe Willock because he was trying his best to get some creative element in the team. And he did came on and put in a, a massive shift, I would definitely say. And I really did like the work that he came on and did. And Lacazette as well came on, put in a shift. But the man himself, I will give Gabriel Martinelli. A six for his appearance and his ability to try and get on the ball, trying to do something, his defensive work. No, I, I cannot be unfair. I give Gabriel Martin a standard five because he was long, he was on the pitch longer than anyone else. So I give Martin a standard five. But it was it was good to see that he is back and he still has a hunger. So that is my player ratings. Now let's move into what David Ornstein said. Alright, so David Ornstein said that. I think he was reporting to Sky Sports, was that um, Mikel Arteta will not be sacked and he basically has a longer duration time period at the club than what Emery had because the owners knew for a fact that there are other underlying elements that are 
causing this team to perform like that so they are looking at those underlying elements and i don't i'm not sure if it is the money factor that if they should sack him they would have to pay him i'm not sure if that is the issue but they are looking at other underlying factors but at this point in time david arsene's um, said that clearly that they are not looking to sack Mikel arteta they want to clean up the backroom staff first and get things in hand before we can actually look to sack Mikel arteta so cleaning up the backroom staff getting certain things in place can definitely um we can say that um, anything going on from there would be on the manager's hand. But for now, they are not looking to sack Mikel Arteta. They are confident in him, same way, and they are willing to stick around until they definitely see that he cannot go any further. But they are willing to stick around. And I understand what you're saying, but at the end of the day, performance on the pitch is a massive factor at the club right now. And we as fans, we cannot linger in that position of the table for too long because we know that the relegation once you're drawn in the relegation heat it is something that is very hard to pull yourself from once you are drawn in the relegation heat it is something that you are you, it is very difficult to pull yourself from it is like an, a magnet that you're attracted to and you, you're consistently going being attracted to that so it's, it's for example when you're 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 drawn in the top four initially from the beginning of the season. It is like a magnet you consistently in out in out. Are some are you're in there and not coming out? But that is the same as the relegation battle. That's the same as the top six are the are, are the middle of the table. That is how it operates. It's like an energy. When you're attracted to that energy, that energy just live, generally just devour you. So um. As you know for now that Mikel Arteta won't be sacked so all those who are crying for it will be disappointed because the club will, are willing to stick around with him and I think that is something good in a sense in regards to that the club the club willing to stick their neck out to get something done and clean up their incompetences before making a move like that because bringing another manager now with the same issues in the backroom staff with the same issues in the playing squad I don't think that any manager would definitely strive under that um, situation again because we're as fun we believe that because if a different manager should come in that automatically he will play Ozil he will play Saliba he will play all the players that we are we as fans are saying is our favorite player which we want to see them play that is not how it, it is that is definitely not how it is and there are situations that are happening things that are happening in the club in the club and I don't think that any manager will just come in and just start out right away. So maybe they are they are put their trust in Mikel Arteta that you are the man to get this sort out. We want you to sort it out. So I do believe that the club is going to stick to their neck and try to get this sort out. Anyway, thanks again. This is the Military Guna TV. Please like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel, and I really do appreciate the fact that you took the time out to tune into the channel and watch the content. I do appreciate that. Thank you very much, Military Guna TV. I'm out.